So as exciting as this example is to see the ship start off at the lower left and move across the screen, I actually want to give us some hands-on interaction and allow us to control it via the keyboard. So let's clean some stuff up. Um, first of all, we're done with this simulated frame spiking. I think we uh, made our point with that. Clock new frame still. That's good. Have initialized shut down. And then instead of starting the ship off in the bottom left hand corner and then moving it across the screen, let's start it in the center. And if you remember the coordinate system, actually let's bring that back up. The coordinate system for our screen, this is a terrible line. This is, that's the y axis. That's the x-axis. This is positive y up here, positive x over here. This is positive 1 in the x. This is positive 1 in the y. Negative 1 in the y, negative 1 in the x over here. All right, so I want to start our position out at 0, 0, right dead center of the screen. And then I don't want our ship to move at all uh, when the game initially comes up. So let's go over here. Uh, ship position, let's just take out these parameters. If you remember, for vector... 2D, I believe, if I hit of 12, we set these default parameter values to zero. So we'll rely on that for position. And then, I believe we had velocity. Yeah, velocity here. I'm going to start that out at zero as well. So let's control F5, see what happens. There we go. Our ship is stuck in the center of the screen. And my first goal is when I push up, I want the ship to go up, right, have it go right, down, and left, which is kind of, if you played asteroids, that actually is, is not intuitive, but at least we have some key control and our ship will move, so I'm going to I'm gonna start with that. And I'm going to show you the less ideal way to do keys. Eventually we'll go into a more elegant game engine worthy approach, a little bit abstract, but for now we're just going to do a very primitive way of getting some keys to work here. So let's, uh, I'm just kind of examining this code. We got this velocity... I think for now, let's take that out, and actually we're going to take out both of these. So, so we'll just say new frame and repaint, and then I'm going to go to the header file for my GL window. Remember our GL window inherits QGL widget, which inherits Q widget, and because of that we get some protective events. So I'm going to say void key press event Q key event pointer. I'm not going to give the variable argument name here because it's not necessary in a declaration. I generally would do a variable name because variable names can be intuitive and give description to those who are calling our functions. But since this is a protected function, and I know exactly what I'm going to do here, I'm going to leave the variable name out. Okay, void key press event. Let's go implement that. So, void. In fact, if you've done any GUI programming, you should see that, holy smokes, you're going to use an event to do your keys? Yeah, this is bad. <laughs> We're going to clean this up a lot better very quickly. But for now, we'll just rely on the events. Uh, okay. Void my GL window key press event. Q key event. E, and this needs to be a pointer. And then we'll go down in here. And what's... Okay, we're good. So what is a key key event. Let me, I actually went through the effort of looking up the documentation for that, but for some reason at 4 a.m. in the morning, QT doesn't like to, or they're cute. It depends on who you talk to. Some people pronounce this cute, some people call it QT, whatever. So, um, I guess their website's not working. So, how, how else could we figure this out? Well, I'm going to click in here, click in here, and if I hit of 12, um, it gives me a couple options here that IntelliSense found while parsing all the uh, include files. So let's just look at Q event here. And it looks like, okay, we have Q key event. And here it's Q input event. And let's look at what functions we get here. We get text. Looks like it returns the text as a Q string. But I don't want to make a bunch of temporary Q string objects. I'm sure those are expensive enough. So let's, uh, there's got to be a way to, oh, look right here. Hey. Int key const returns k, which who cares what k is? I guess it's the key, but but it it gives us the key that was pushed. It gives us its value as an int. Well, what does that int mean? Well, if this documentation was working, I'd show you. In fact, let me just try to refresh there, and nope, 
their website's having issues. So let's do this. Uh, I'll just tell you, instead of showing you in the documentation, I can say Qt key colon colon and then look at all these values. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0, and A, and there's probably keys here that I have no idea how they'd be on my keyboard, but whatever. There's C, the alphabet, close. Man, you'd have to have one heck of a keyboard to have most of these keys. But uh, look, oh, there's all the function keys. And you can see the letters are coming in, G and H and so on and so forth. Uh, let's do key up. Okay, so that would tell us if we're going up, or up arrow, then down, left, right. Now notice all these key codes start with the word key, which may seem a little redundant. You see, well, we got QT, and then we got this key enum. In fact, I'll click there, hit F12, and hey, it's an enum, and then all the keys inside are, are prefixed with the word key. Well, let me explain, explain why that is. Enums don't provide any level of scope. Right, so even though this is an enum, and even though I can scope into it to get the value, notice I no, I actually don't need it. I don't have to say QT key. I could just say QT key left, so I can access the members of that enum directly. So uh, I don't know if it's a hacky way or not. It is the way it is. Uh, to avoid name clashes, for example, if I had more than one enum with the member left in it. In order to avoid clashes between those names, we go to all the effort of prefixing our enum values with the actual enum name to force that level of scope. I noticed in the new C++ they've added features to um, actually scope enums, but I don't think the Microsoft compiler supports it yet, or at least last time I tried to use it, it, it didn't work. All right, so that's why we have key left and so on and so forth. Let's uh, do something interesting here. I'm going to say if e key. Oh, notice I'm not getting any IntelliSense. I'm not Intelli... Man, that's a... That was an uneducated way to say that. IntelliSense is not giving me any support. There you go. A more educated way of saying it. IntelliSense isn't popping up. How about that? That's a programmer way of saying it. Why not? Well, if you rely on IntelliSense heavily, then that's probably not good, but we do. It's, it's there. It's nice. Um, another thing, though, is, is even though when I click here and I hit F12, uh... IntelliSense through its parsing was able to find key event and things like that. Um, the compiler won't find it. So I'm going to say key. If key is equal to QT key, let's just start with up for now. And I'm, I'm going to close. I'm going to hit Control Shift B and watch. We'll get a compile error. The compiler will complain and say, hey, um, you're saying key, but the left hand side of the arrow must point to something I know about. I, 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 I don't know what to do. Right? Oh, there was a better error there, actually. IntelliSense pointer, this is IntelliSense error there. IntelliSense pointer to incomplete class type is not allowed. Use of undefined type Q, Q, and what the compiler is saying, and IntelliSense is saying the same thing, is, uh, okay, I know that E is a Q key event, but I don't know if you can call this function on E, because I don't really know everything there is to know about Q key event. Well, why is that? If you've watched my C++ videos, uh, you know that um, in header files, which is, and this is quite common, but in one of these header files, I probably QGL widget, which inherits Q widget, which blah, 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 blah. They said something to the effect of class Q key event. All right, now why would you want to do that? That's it's kind of an empty class. Let's scratch your head a little bit. Well, the reason why we do that, and the reason why they did it appropriately in the Qt or Qt uh, libraries is this tells the compiler, hey, Q key event is a class, and because it's a class, you can have pointers to it, but we're not going to tell you everything about this class because we're going to wait for later to do that. Now, why would you want to wait for later? Well, if everything, like if if QGL widget w pound includes Q widget, and it pound included the entire class definition for Q key event, all of a sudden our header files got really large. And it's dangerous to make header files really large because you pound include header files into comp compilation units. But furthermore, you pound include those header files into other header files, and so on and so forth. And so we have all this unnecessary definition getting pound, in pound included everywhere. And that's not good. That, that takes compile time. It also bloats the namespace. That sort of, or it bloats the namespace for that compilation unit, and 
and I'm using that word compilation unit. If you're not familiar with that, go look up C++ playlist. But essentially when I say compilation unit, I'm thinking CPP file. So anyway, to make these things lightweight, they just say, well, class Q key event, we'll tell you more about it later. For now, you know that you can have a pointer in it. And it keeps things nice and clean. It doesn't bloat the bloat the scope, so to say. Or the, anyway, all right. So so that's what the compiler is complaining about here. It's saying, hey, um, I know this is a pointer, but I don't know exactly if we can call key on it or not. So now that we're in this compilation unit, I need to give the compiler more info as to what this is. I need to define the class. All right? Before we had the class in here, we're just declaring it, saying, hey, it, it, it will exist. All right? But over here, we actually have to define it so the compiler knows, hey, I can call the key function. Well, it's pretty simple. All we need to do is pound include it. So I'm going to go right here, and I'm going to say pound include qt slash or it's QT GUI actually, Q key event. Notice I'm not, IntelliSense is not giving me any help here. That's because some of the header files in QT don't have the .h extension. They're just, uh, there's no name to it. So I don't know why they, some do and some don't. Like QDebug, it has an H, whereas Q key event doesn't. I don't, I don't know why they d designed it that way. I think it's inconsistent what they did, but it is what it is. I also notice our includes are kind of getting a little messy here. There, I actually have a pattern for how I like to do includes. Let's do, um, first of all, glue has to come first because that has to come before OpenGL, which is included here. This header file is the header file for this compilation unit. So ideally I'd put this first, but I have to put glue first in this special case. So I'll keep that. And then uh, C assert, that's standard. But generally you want to I tend to put standard after my middleware just because when I pound include C assert, then that defines C assert for these guys. For example, watch if I if I take this include here, control L, move it up here. Well now this include is before these ones. And if these guys use C assert, I'm sure the QT guys were pro enough to define their own search and use the search appropriately. So I don't think including C assert above these guys is going to cause them any pain. But generally I tend to put middleware up there and then bring in the standard ones. Actually, no, that's backwards. Bring in the standard ones and then the middleware. And then these are our own ones. And we're using namespaces in there, so I think we're good. But still, these are these belong to us, so I'm going to include them last. All right. Standard, middleware, all that stuff first, and then ours will be last. Okay. Let's make the ship move. If key, if we're going up, we're in the ship position dot uh, y plus equals one and control C, V, 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 and now you know I'm going to do some copy paste errors here because I always do. Let's do right and left. And again, Jamie religion is I don't like curlies if I don't need them. I know that's going to make most of you throw up, but it is how I is. How, how <laughs> it is how I is. <laughs> key up, key down. If we're going down, we want to go down. Right, we want to go right like this. And we want to go left like that. Build, run, control F5. Okay, watch what happens. Up. Do you get what happened? Down, down, up, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, up, left. Every time I press a key, we're incrementing our position by one. And I told you that this is the one in the Y, one in the X, so on and so forth. We want a little more granularity. So how can we do that? Well, trial and error, 0, 0.0F. Five there. I'm gonna let's just try one value. Up. Ah, that's not too bad. Up. Up. It's not too bad. I think maybe a little slower. Let's point. Try 0 0.02. Up. Okay, maybe a little more tolerable. Uh, and then I can like a true professional copy, paste, paste, paste. Hopefully you're hurling as I'm throwing these magic numbers around. But let's just see if this. This is good. Yep, left and right, and left and 
Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's great. So at least I can be slightly, a little bit more pro, but not very much more pro. I'm gonna say speed, and we need to say float here. 0.02 f, and then here I'm gonna highlight this. Control H, replace 0.02 f with speed. Look in selection, replace all, pop. Build that, run that. Are we good? Yep, okay. So, like I said, this is a much less ideal way of doing key input. And I'm going to show you, show you the problems and how to fix them in the next video.